So we arrive in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan only a few hours after finishing up Pro Gym Montreal. Shoot and Mutant on a mission can be a hectic endeavor, so we grabbed a couple hours sleep and headed to one of Canada's most unusual dungeon gyms. Equipment from the 70s, 80s and 90s fills this gym and gives it an enormous amount of character. Ironworks Gym, Saskatoon. I'm Big Ron Partlow and this is Mutant on a Mission. Mutant Nation, episode two of season five, Mutant on a Mission. We're in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I've heard about this gym for about the last 15 years off and on, but a friend of mine started training here and he said I had to bring the show here because this was Mutant on a Mission material. It's Ironworks Gym, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. It's a dungeon, let's go down the stairs. Pat. Hey Ron. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Yeah, you Appreciate bet. it very much. So, Ironworks Gym. Tell me about it, how long? 35 years. 35 years. I remember this heavy metal. I yes. mean, this is a famous, what, animated, animated musical video. cartoon yeah. kind of. Pretty um, racy, yes. Yeah, pretty racy. It was more of an adult thing mm -hmm. back in the, what was it, it was in the 80s, late yep. 70s? Yep. yep, With the heavy metal soundtrack. So it's cool that you have these up. And obviously the Arnold posters and, yep. you know, Ollie and stuff. Arnold is, to me, the epitome of bodybuilding. I think we all, I mean, even myself, like it seems every generation is still getting continually uh, motivated to train because of Arnold. And he keeps know? driving it. I know. That's the best part. I know. You know, because people don't understand bodybuilding. Yeah. They don't know how to react to it. Is it a sport? Is it a... An art? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard both. training. It's, it's six days a week. It's dedication. Yeah. It's more than a lot of other things. Yeah. People don't get that. So here's our logo. It's uh, it's a traditional old school bodybuilding gym logo. Yeah. You know and I, I mean? actually even designed it myself. It's cool. I couldn't draw it myself, but my friend drew it and I told him, and together we created this one. I like how you used a back double bicep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not ever everyone else, you know, uses the front double or whatever, yeah. but that's, that's not cool. trendy. It's not trendy here. No. Definitely not trendy. Well, I want to see some of your not trendy equipment. Okay. So I got to ask you, I don't see any cables. Mm -hmm. I see chains. Okay. And now I've heard that they're great to train on. They are very good. Now I'm wondering what the maintenance is like. Do they just last forever? You just got to yes. keep them clean and greased? Yep. Yeah. That's it. They don't fray. The plastic doesn't come off them. The mechanics of, of the roller chain and the sprocket is so cool because there's no slippage or stretching. Right. So when you pull it, it moves, but you gotta control on the way back because it'll wanna go back really quickly, right? So this used to be all cables. I just replaced them four years ago, and they're still perfect. No, that's cool. But it, it's just noisier, but okay, so what? Yeah, yeah. But active, it's, it, the action you, of it is super nice. You mean you don't want nice. your gym to sound like a library? No. Definitely. Okay, I can help you out with that. I tend to make a bit of noise sometimes. Good, good. <laughs> okay, that's let's, cool. Let's have a look at some of this stuff. So this is the, the extensions and curls and calves. Yes. And I'm seeing chain drive, Nautilus stuff. Yep. I'm seeing, this is like, how old is this? 35 years? Uh, Black Line. They were a company that opened up when I was first developing the gym. So there's four different leg extensions. They all are all different. Everyone's yes. different. Yeah. So a person has a choice, right? Which is the nice feature of having a gym. In that a guy who runs it's a bodybuilder and a powerlifter. So I like to train. So I like different variations of the same thing. So as you coming here, you're going to get that option. Whereas other places tend not to be like that. Right. So you got a monolift, which in our when I was in the powerlifting, this is our association. Use these now because of the safety feature, right? Yeah. It's good, and it's fully adjustable. Oh, you've got a great setup. So here's an item you don't see every day. A built-in monolift to the squat rack. Nice. So, fully adjustable, which is okay. 
there's only one dilemma about this style. Right. If you have two people of different heights using it. Right. Right? That's what this thing is. Oh, it's Band. a hydraulic so bar you, lifter. The pit crew comes in, you put it underneath. You don't have to unload it. And you jack it. it up. So we change the position, move the pins, roll it out. So right. that's your break, right? So it takes about a minute to do that. So you, so did you look at a deadlift jack and think, why don't we just make a squat jack? Yeah, that's a cool idea, man. Yeah. So I've, well, this is so this would be. There's another unique thing. No, I don't think there's the, such a thing in, yeah, anywhere this, else. This goes on the list of I don't think has ever been produced by anyone. No. I've never seen this. I've been at like some crazy powerlifting gyms. I've yeah. never seen a monolift jack, right? Yeah. Because now the monoliths have the jacks built into them. So. I like that one. Yeah, that's there exactly you go. Correct. Okay, cool. So that's, that's cool, kind man. of a neat item. Your leg presses and hacks caught my eye mm -hmm. because um, I actually was told that, that my one buddy comes here to do legs. Mm -hmm. I was told this hack squat was awesome. Yeah. So what's the deal with this stuff? Okay, the biggest difference between the two hack squats, the design of the backboard, that's a long backboard, which means your butt has to stay forward, so you gotta go out. Right, right. This one's like squatting. You get your butt underneath the pad, right? stick it back here, and it's unbelievable. Yeah, this, I know exactly what you mean. This machine is from 1979, a gym I trained in <laughs> that was burned in a fire, so it got destroyed. Well, right. how do you destroy metal? No. The upholstery. Hack that squat, was a, hack, a good hack squat will live forever. So this was made by Zuber, and no. Zuber made all their equipment out of this tubing. Right. And they bend it all for shape. And it's sort of like a grandiose height too. Like yeah. it's like they built it bigger than it had to be. Like it, yeah. it's kind of like they had their own style. So this is this is when I look around the gym and I see some there's some Cybex pieces in here. So these are the newest pieces in the gym. Yep. Because they, they look like they're separate from the other equipment. Oh definitely. So we had a friend who was getting some free cardio out of an old building. And he said, you know, there's a bunch of junky equipment in there. You can go have a look. And he went in, and all that Cybex stuff was there. And they just wanted it out. They just wanted him to take it for free. So he took that and the dumbbells and a bunch of stuff. If you're a gym owner, sometimes that stuff happens. And you got to be ready for it when it does. So well, you said you had an Nautilus pullover. Yep. And uh, I just had to come see which one you had. You mm -hmm. know, Nautilus made this piece for, what, 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. I bet? Um, so yeah, tell me about this pullover and where it came from. Well, it's the flashiest piece I got. It's all chrome. <laughs> so this piece is very unique because of how it's designed. Well, I'm going to give it a try. Okay. So the key to this is when you do pullovers, you know how you pull over and through? Well, think yeah. of that when you're coming through. You pull over and break your hands and bring your elbows back. There you go. Beautiful. That's the right way to use this. Everybody loves to grip the handle because they can pull better. Right. Well, yeah. it's not about pulling better. And then you, it's yeah, about the proper leverage, right? It's actually really nice. I can feel that chain. Yeah. So I want to tell you that I don't think I stop at cardio in most of the episodes. I actually don't remember stopping at cardio for a long time, but I see you have a couple of woodways. Mm -hmm. And in a gym like this, they kind of stick out to me. So tell me why you have woodways. The whole concept of this gym is about training. This is a training treadmill because if you move, it moves. If you stop, it stops. Yes. But the coolest thing about this, it's an uphill reach. So it teaches people how to run properly or even walk properly because you have to step, plant, and pull as right. opposed to flip, 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 flip. Right. So I see you got a turf. Yep. So this is what you would consider the real cardio. Oh, yeah. This is a huge upgrade for Ironworks. Uh, I see all these people work with athletes and stuff like that and all these other venues and they don't have the equipment I do but they have turf and they have sleds and they have all these gimmicky things. So I thought, well, you know, I have the, the space and the opportunity. Um, I want to bring this in, kind of just to change it up a little bit, right? Right. So I walked the floor before we do the episode. I just yep. want to see what catches my eye. And I got what was going on here, but I don't know what this is. Okay. I couldn't, this was one thing you had me stumped on. Yeah. Now I'm gonna just get in it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Put your palms there. So now what am I supposed just to do? pick up and rotate your elbows outward. There you go. Oh. So this now is this all is, This is nasty. This thing has a stack that big on it. 
Again, one of those Jeez. machines that they don't get cracked that much because the, the dynamic of this machine is isolates your traps so much, you can't cheat. So there's no cheating. The, the most painful part is sometimes on your forearms. Yeah. Because so, they bite so hard on top, right? This is better than turned over. And the other good thing is the mirror's gone because people used to spit on it, you know? Like they're working so hard. And, so Man, that's actually the mirror's gone. really like interesting. I've never ever. Oh, it's beautiful. I've never felt anything like that. Yep. Is this a, a self-build or is nope. a brand? This is a Nautilus. This is Nautilus? This is a Nautilus. This really? is from the 70s. Just like its partner over here, the four-way neck machine. Yeah, this is a cool piece You could drop this too. out of a plane and it wouldn't hardly scratch the paint. <laughs> you know, they're so, built. So you, 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 you stumped me on a piece. It's good. very rare. It's been a long, long time. That's so good. You get a handshake for that, buddy. Well, thanks, thanks, man. So you tell me about your wall here. Okay. All these people are people that have trained in my gym and I've worked with. Right. Me inclusive. Right. Oh, this is you? Yeah. Wow, so what year is this? 1986. You look fantastic. Good looking kid, good looking kid. Yeah, I got hair there. Yeah, yeah. So and then this is the epitome of the whole start of bodybuilding in Saskatchewan. This was in uh, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. It was the per first provincial one we ever had. It was in 1979. So no, and then here's cool. an executive picture Then I was involved in the association. So I was a judge as well. Right. And a competitor. So you've been involved in bodybuilding and given back right to the sport the of bodybuilding day. right from Ed the first Roland, day. Ed Roland, thank you very much. It was the man that brought this to development. Okay. So I saw this up here yep. and I got to mention it because most people who watch the show, they know that I'm a huge ACDC fan. And I see that you got an ACDC poster. Oh, up. Yeah. So I automatically think, ah, oh, this is extra cool. Yeah. So just tell me why you put this up here. Well, because ever since I opened the gym, ACDC was the music I played. Right. And I enjoy it, the training uh, with that style of music. Because it, it's the kind of beat that anybody can train to. So the ACDC poster grabbed my attention. I'm a huge fan of the band, probably know too much about them. But the truth of the matter is, ACDC is an integral part of the soundtrack of bodybuilding. From the late 70s all the way till today, it's one of the bands that has always made the cut. Train at any serious gym, any hardcore gym, any dungeon gym, you're gonna hear some ACDC. And then some of the other pictures here, there, there's another one with Ed Coyne oh, yeah. in it, he signed. Yeah. This one's a, a big one of me. That's you. At the same show as that other color one. There you go. So it's been a fantastic walk through your gym, man. This is unlike any gym I've been to for a long, long, long time. So uh, I'm happy I came, had a great time. I can't wait to train. Good. I appreciate you showing me around. Oh, yeah. So I just want to thank Pat from Ironworks Gym. Appreciate it, my friend. Thanks, Ron. I really yeah, appreciate what you, you did for you, me. You bet, man. This any, is awesome. Anytime, anytime. This episode is brought to you by Mutant Mass. Move the scale. So it's time to train. You know, that's uh, probably my favorite part. I got Morgan Sharp here. This is a good friend of mine, Morgan. Say hi to Mutant Nation. Hey, everybody. How's it going? So Morgan uh, actually hired me in 2013 to help him be a bodybuilder. Something like that, Look eh? what happened. Whoops. Yeah, something happened. <laughs> <laughs> so we were working together for five years. Morgan smoked the show that we, we did a couple years ago. He looked awesome. So we're going to go hard for you guys. So stay tuned. So I actually love this old Smith. It's a very heavy bar, there's no counterbalance on it. And it's got a bit of play to it, so it's almost free weightish. But it keeps you in line. You gotta get the perfect reps. Damn. Oh, 
go. go. One more. Here we go. You know, a lot of people preach the importance of free weights, and I definitely obviously believe that that's foundational. But the way I've always trained with the beyond failure, forced reps, extra negatives if I can, I mean, that lends itself really well to machine training. Because then you're not worrying about uh, becoming uh, dangerously unstable while you're still trying to go past failure. So I actually love the Smith machine for pressing because you can really push yourself beyond failure where with the free bar, I mean, you'd need like a really expert spotter. Yeah, you'd need to have everything perfect. So you don't be afraid of machines, man. Nice. Put everything in line. So this is a rehearsal for the work set. That's how I think about it. You're rehearsing, and I'm mentally thinking that these reps have to be as perfect as the next set with another plate. So it's a mental rehearsal. Two. Up. Right there. When people talk about feeling the muscle contract, the longer you train, the better you'll get at that. So when we were doing this machine, coming out of the bottom, I could actually feel my pecs pulling on my sternum, like yanking across my breastbone. And that's something that, you know, I didn't feel that when I first started training. So it's, you continue to feel and feel more and more as you do it. There you go. Bam. Come on. Nice. Up. There we go. These are, these are starting to count. There we go. Now we're into it. Now we're into it. Go again. Now we're into it. There we go. All the way. Drive, drive, drive. Yes. Slow. Go right here. Hold, hold, hold. Most of the time on this show, I train with people I've never trained with before and will probably never train with again. So it was great to have a session with Morgan on camera. I've been helping him for years. We've worked out together a lot. And being in the dungeon, we knew we should push a really hard old school workout, lots of forced reps and some negatives, that sort of stuff. We thought we'd have fun for you guys. you for another one, but oh, there is nothing there, man. Okay. All right, big set here. Yeah, quality reps. Good. Good reps. Stretch and squeeze. 
Ja. Drop them out. Keep it tight. Another one. Keep it tight. Up, 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 up. Good. Good. This is very Okay, so thanks to my buddy Morgan Sharp. Check him out on Instagram. He's that pump. So uh, hit him up, that pump. Ironworks Gym. Thanks to Pat. Everyone here was super nice. There's a bunch of people here wanted pictures and stuff, and they all knew Mutant, and they all knew Mutant on a mission, and it makes it really cool for me when I go to gyms and the members know exactly what's going on, you know? First couple seasons, I had to explain the show. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, we're filming a show. So you get it off the ground, right? Yeah, yeah. Now you're famous. Well, D-list YouTube. Oh, okay. Oh, D-list wow. YouTube stuff. So thanks, Mutant Nation. Big Ron Parlo, season five just keeps rolling. I'm out. So this is Jake, he's the, uh, the, the, the uh, owner's dog, Pat's dog, and uh, he's amazing. And as soon as I walked in, he came over and started rubbing up against me and talking to me. And so uh, I love when gyms have dogs. I wish we could have dogs in our gym running around all over the place, hey buddy? So uh, some of the perks of the job is you get to meet uh, some of these guys. So it's, uh, I love it.